What's up, everyone? It's the OOTP GM. I want to welcome you all to the ninth episode here of my Detroit Tigers GM Let's Play here in Out of the Park Baseball 18. So we are here in the 2018 off season, and we did not make the playoffs as was probably expected. Uh, we finished the year 73 and 89, and we were just ravaged by injuries. Pretty much the entire season, but definitely in the second half. We lost a lot of big name guys. You can see Christian Stewart, Injun Ryu, San Francisco Liriano, Josh Tomlin. Tomlin we had lost at the beginning of the year all season, and then we lost guys like Stewart, Ryu, Liriano in the second half. We lost a bunch of other guys to injuries as well. Just overall, not a particularly great year, but there were a few bright spots. Uh, Michael Fulmer and Daniel Norris both had really good years for us. Uh, Fulmer, 3.41 ERA, 3.84 WHIP, or I'm sorry, 3.84 FIP, 4.5 WAR, and Daniel Norris, uh, 3.11 ERA, 3.83 FIP, 3.9 WAR. So that's a really positive sign. They're a young, uh, talented duo that we can build a pitching staff around. And then Jordan Zimmerman made a uh, four starts at the end of the year. They weren't particularly great, but. He did come back. We'll have to make a decision on him this offseason on what we're going to do with him. In regards to our lineup, uh, Cabrera was pretty good. He did miss time this year with an injury, but I can't uh, be too upset with how he performed. Uh, Tyler Collins had a breakout season for us, and we're going to have to make a decision on him. And Justin Upton also had a pretty good year. He missed time also due to an injury, but again, as things stand, I'm not um, too upset with how everybody performed. And so overall, you know, disappointing we didn't make the playoffs, but there are some bright spots to take out of how the season went. So to give you guys a playoff recap, the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers ended up winning the World Series. That is the second consecutive World Series they have won. They were down 3-1 to the Oakland Athletics and ended up uh, winning the World Series by winning the last three games, coming back to, from a 3-1 deficit. So they could be the beginning of a dynasty, perhaps. Uh, but, you know, we're in the rebuilding process now at this point, so we might be able to avoid them uh, a little bit and just kind of let them do their thing, and then we'll we'll do our thing. So there is one thing before we get into full-blown off-season mode here. There is one thing I wanted to show you guys. So one thing that I did off-screen is I completely – gutted our personnel department and hired a whole new staff. Obviously, Osmus and Avila are still on their contracts. I haven't made a decision on what I'm going to do with Osmus. I want to see what happens. I actually think winning 73 games with all the injuries and everything we suffered is admirable, so I'm not ready to fire him or get rid of him yet, but we'll have to make a decision on him soon. But I hired Ryan Sandberg to be our new bench coach. Uh, Gene Lamont, who was our bench coach, retired. And the reason I hired Ryan Sandberg is because of this. He is excellent when it comes to the development influence, and he has a good relationship with the players. Doesn't have a great relationship with some of the pitchers, but some of these guys aren't going to be on our team next year, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, so we brought Ryan Sandberg in. The other reason I hired Sandberg is because if we decide to move on from Osmus, Sandberg is the logical choice to be the next manager. I hired a new pitching coach and a new uh, hitting coach, Josh Miller. I hired him because he's a ground baller coach, and a lot of our pitchers are ground ball type pitchers. So you want to have a pitcher that a pitching coach that corresponds to the most type of pitchers that you have. I hired uh, Bill Mueller. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't really have any large group of players that subscribe to a specific type. Because for hitting coaches, you have power, neutral, patience, and contact. I don't have a large group of players that subscribes to one of those. So I just hired Mueller because I've had him in the past, and he's turned out to be a pretty good hitting coach. So that's why I brought him in. Theo Epstein is my new scouting director. Now, for those of you that are confused, uh, scout Theo Epstein is the president of baseball operations for the Cubs in real life. In this game, however, president of operations type people like Epstein and Billy Bean, they're not recognized that way, so since they've been general managers in the past, you can hire them to be your general manager or your scouting director, and in my opinion, Epstein is potentially the best scout you can have in this game. I mean, if you look at his ratings, 
it's just incredible. And if we're going to be going through the rebuilding process, you want to have a really good scout. So that's why I hired him. And lastly, we hired this Japanese doctor to be our new team trainer. And I did this because he is really amazing when it comes to prevention. And with as many injuries as we suffered, I want to have a doctor who is really good at preventing them. He's not as great at healing, but he is very, very good at preventing them. And that is why I hired him. So now that we've got that out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing with the team this offseason. We're going into full build, full blown rebuild mode here. And we, while we have some young guys that we're going to be able to build around, we're going to have some tough decisions to make with veterans and other guys. So if we go into the salary arbitration screen, obviously some of these guys are going to get re-signed. We'll get to those in a minute. But guys, we are not going to bring back. Hutchison spent most of his year in AAA. We are not going to bring him back. Unfortunately, that trade did not work out for us, but it is what it is. You take chances. Sometimes they don't work out. Same thing with this Brett Wallace. He was only brought up because we had an injury to Miguel Cabrera, but he was not very good when we called him up. He batted like 150 in the majors. So we're going to withdraw an offer to him. And then some of these other relievers will have to make a decision on later, but those two guys for sure we're not bringing back. In regards to these arbitration guys, Fulmer obviously we're bringing back. He's the ace of our staff at this point. And he wants a long-term deal. Now I am perfectly comfortable giving him one because he's only 25 an eight-year deal is fine with me uh to give him that i am going to add team options onto this i'm going to add uh two team options to the end of this to make it a little bit more team friendly just in case for whatever reason he starts to struggle but i don't anticipate that happening and one thing that i like to do is i like to add a little bit to these team options so i can redistribute it elsewhere so we added four million i'm going to take 2 million away from here and I'm going to take 2 million away from here so it helps to soften the blow a little bit uh, in terms of an extension like this so I'm going to ask for his response he seems to like that so it looks like we're going to get Michael Fulmer back Daniel Norris we obviously want to re-sign him he's not looking for a long-term deal uh, but I will offer him 5 million to come back and he likes that so we will do that we're not bringing back Hutchinson. Kyle Ryan is a guy who, while he would be relatively inexpensive, he hasn't pitched very well for us the last two seasons. And I feel like there could be better uh, relievers out in the market, and we have young pitchers coming up through our system. So I'm not going to bring back Kyle Ryan. Alex Wilson has been pretty good the last couple of years. He's only a one-star player, but his rate, you know, his ratings don't, say so but he's been a really good pitcher for us the last couple of years i mean if you look 296 era 382 333 so his ratings have been or his uh rather his performance has been pretty good despite his ratings now i don't love the fact that he's an unmotivated player um but i am going to re-sign him only because he does provide some value and we could always trade him or move on from him if we need to but I like what I like what he's given us despite his ratings not being there. So I'm going to offer him 1.8850 here. 1.85 million. He thinks that's fair. Vasquez we're going to re-sign. Uh he had a decent year as our catcher, but we want I want him to compete with uh Max Pentecost for the starting catching spot. So he's asking for 1.6. I'm going to offer him 1.5 instead. He likes that. Obviously, like I said, we're not bringing back Brett Wallace. Matt Davidson is a guy, like I said, we picked him up off of waivers. And he actually had a somewhat decent season for us this year. And he provides uh, value for us. And, he, and he's not going to be that expensive. So I'm going to bring Davidson back. He's only asking for 850000 and I can probably get him for less than I'm gonna I'm gonna offer him nine hundred thousand. And he's okay with that. Uh Mike Mikey Matt Matuk, uh he spent part of the season in the minors, and he doesn't provide much value other than being a good defensive outfielder, but I don't like how much his ratings have dipped, and I don't like his hitting rating, so I am not going to bring him back. Even though he's inexpensive, I'm not gonna bring him back. 
Collins we need to resign because he had a breakout season for us this year and he's, you know, a young outfielder I think we can we can build around a little bit and he's only looking for one year so we can kind of take it one year at a time for his remaining arbitration years. So I'm going to offer him 4 million and he seems to like that. Now in terms of the compensation free agents, uh, I'm not going to offer any qualifying offers to any of these guys because they're not worth $15 million. Ryu, I'm not going to re-sign. Uh, and Tomlin, I'm not going to re-sign. They were, you know, bad breaks with injuries, and they just, they're not worth my time. Romine and Espinoza are essentially the same player, uh, but Romine provides more value to us at this point because he, he hit a lot better in the time that we gave him. So I'm going to re-sign Romine because he provides value for us. Now, he wants a two-year deal, and I don't want to guarantee him two years, so I'm going to do a team option. I'm perfectly fine doing 1.6 for both years. So we're going to do that. That way we don't have to guarantee him that second year if we don't want to. And Justin Wilson had a decent year as our closer. I'm comfortable re-signing him for one more year. Now, he wants... A big long-term deal, $17 million per year. As much as I like Justin Wilson, he is not worth $17 million, and we need to be flexible with our money. Now, the fact that he's asking for $17 million, I'm actually tempted to offer him a qualifying offer now. I didn't realize he was going to ask for $17 million. So I'm actually going to offer him the qualifying offer because if he accepts it, I will look to trade him. I'm not going to pay him $15 million to be our closer. But if he doesn't accept it, we'll at least get compensation if he signs, and then I can look to, to sign a different player. Robbie Ross, we are going to look to re-sign. We got him in that trade, and uh, he looks for he's looking for a multi-year deal, but he's a solid arm out of the bullpen. And I'm going to tweak these numbers a little bit. I'm going to move... This down by one million, this up by one million, make this a team option, and I'm gonna do this. And he's fine with that. So we'll bring back a lot of these different guys. That's what we're gonna do with our free agents. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move forward here uh until the arbitration hearings. And here's the playoffs, as you can see what happened during the playoffs here. And we'll see uh how many of these guys it looks like most of them are going to accept our offers. And, yeah, so Romine, Alex Wilson, Matt Davidson, Vasquez, Ross, Fulmer, signs. fans are excited about that, Norris, Collins, and uh, all those guys signed back. And then I want to go through the awards real quick while it's on my mind. Uh, so we'll start here. Uh, gold glove, we didn't win. Our Christian Vasquez won a gold glove for us, which was our only gold glove, but that's nice to see that we got him partially because he's a really good defensive catcher. And then reliever of the year was for the AL was Cam uh, Bedrosian, I think that's how you pronounce it, the closer for the Los Angeles Angels. Pretty good year for him. American League Silver Slugger Award, I don't think we won any here. And we did not. A lot of injuries that's going to hurt us there. Uh, best rookie was Miguel Anduar. We didn't have anybody finish in the top there. Uh, Terry Francona wins the AL Manager of the Year. And then Cy Young. Marcus Stroman wins the Cy Young this year. I'm really surprised, actually, because Chris Sale almost won the, the pitching triple crown. So, but I mean, Stroman had a really good year too, but I mean, Sale was really close to winning the pitching triple crown, so uh, Kershaw won it in the NL. And then Andrew Benatendi won the MVP. Wow, yeah, 346, 26 home runs, 97 RBIs. Lindor finishes second. Greg Bird from the Yankees finishes third. And Dylan Cozens, uh, I don't know if this guy is a, a prospect or not, but he just crushed it this year 316 63 home runs 162 rbis that is ridiculous wow what a wow he's a he's a beast i don't know who this guy is but he's a beast so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on from this so like i said all those guys that we were looking to get signed got signed all these other guys we're going to let them walk 
And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here real quick, and I will rejoin you guys when we are at free agency. All right, guys, so we are back, and as you can see, Justin Wilson declined our qualifying offer, so he became a free agent, so when he signs, we will get compensation. And with our first-round pick not signing this year, we could potentially have three first-round draft picks next year, so that would be huge in our uh, rebuilding effort. So I was looking through international free agents that are here, and I should note that there weren't any really interested posted players. The Korean Baseball League didn't post any people this year, and for the Japanese guys, there was no, they were all like one-star players, so I didn't even bother to show them to you guys. In terms of international free agents, the two that interest me, this Luis uh, Ibarra is a four-and-a-half star center fielder, but I'm sure he's going to be expensive, and I'm trying to be careful about how much money I spend. And then this Arturo uh, Caraba, I'm sure I'm butchering these names, I apologize. Uh, he's a three-star uh, reliever, but I like the I like some of his ratings that I looked at, so I might look and see how much these guys are looking for. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna head into uh, the off season here. We're gonna take a look at a lot of the free agents, and the one thing I did want to show before we get into that. So, in terms of our team, um, we technically have a starting five for next year. I I think what I'm gonna do is. As much as I would like to trade Jordan Zimmerman to get his $25 million off the books, I don't. he doesn't have any trade value right now. I already looked. There's just nobody's offering anything for him, and I don't blame teams for not offering us anything. So I'm going to hold on to him for the time being, but he might be a trade deadline candidate uh, next, season, next season. But see if we can get anything out of him before we look to, to move him. Uh, so we have that... So we have that taken care of in terms of the starting pitching. Lineup-wise, there are still obviously some holes that we could look to fill. Cody Eaves is probably going to go into next year as our starting second baseman. He looks like he's starting to fill out nicely. And most of the other positions are filled, but it never hurts to try to look for upgrades at any position. And especially in the bullpen. I'm definitely going to look for, for bullpen arms. So we head into free agency. And we'll go ahead and we'll head to the top here. And obviously Zach Britton would be nice. Now uh, Salisa so Reeve is looking for $22 million. It probably prices him out of my range. Even though we have $55 million for free agents, I don't want to be blowing all that money right away. I want to be able to save that money for when we're ready to contend. Then we can look to spend it. But in terms of guys at the top here, Michael Saunders is interesting because he's only looking for $1.3 million. And he, I mean, he's 32 years old. 1.3 million is relatively inexpensive, and obviously we're not looking to contend right now, but he is a nice sort of stopgap guy, although his stats for the last two years uh, are abhorrent. I mean, a 196 and a 189 batting average. Um, not a particularly great fielder. He's a selfish player, which doesn't excite me very much. And But, I mean, the price is super cheap. And he's not interested in signing with us anyways, so that's okay. I was just more or less curious. Let's go ahead and look at relievers. Let's see if there's any relievers that are on the cheat that we might be able to pick up. So this Adam uh, Otavino, he's looking at, see, three and a half. Trevor Rosenthal is interesting. He's only looking for $3 million, He's and he's been a really good pitcher in the past. I'm going to, I might offer Trevor Rosenthal a deal. So he's looking for... Three years, player option the last year. Let's make this a team option instead. And I'm actually comfortable with this kind of deal, so I'm gonna I'm gonna offer Rosenthal a deal. He expects to be a closer, and maybe he'll get that role. But I mean, I can't really argue with with a guy uh, of his caliber being there, and that's not too much to pay for a top end closer. Now here's this Carball or Car. I, I I'm butchering his name. I'm just gonna call him Arturo. Arturo, uh, 2.8 million, 28 years old, three-star rating, uh, really good stuff. He's a two-pitch guy, and he definitely has the personality that I'm looking for. So, and he's looking for just a two-year deal, 2.8 million dollars per year. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna 
asked for his response. So I'm going to offer these two guys deals, these two closers, or two relievers rather, former closers, two solid relievers. And let's go ahead and we'll take a look. Uh, we're going to look at all relievers again. And I don't think there's anybody else that caught my eye. Uh, this Wilf Wilfredo Boskin, maybe, but I mean, only 900,000, but not super excited about that. And some of these guys that are up here that are asking for more money, their demands might come down as time goes on. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to also look at infielders and outfielders. I'm going to look at these positions individually. So uh, Kinsler became a free agent, but he's, he wants too much money, so we're not going to sign him back. Jonathan Shoup, 6.2 million. He's only a three-star guy. This Micah Johnson's interesting. Two and a half star player, only 950,000. Uh, he only spent he spent bits and pieces in the majors the last few years. He's been more of a minor league guy. Hasn't played particularly well. Does have good personality ratings. Pretty good infielder. Provides some speed. I'm actually going to offer this guy a contract. He's a left-handed bat. Never hurts to have a little bit of extra competition. So I'm going to offer him a deal. He's still a young guy, only 27 years old. $950,000 is fine with me. So we'll go ahead and offer him a contract. And then the only other guy, the only other thing I want to look at is outfielders. We pretty much have most of our outfield positions set with Stewart and Upton and Collins. The problem is all three of those guys are left fielders per se. So it'd be nice to get somebody else. Now Blackman would be a nice signing, but I mean eleven million dollars. We do have a lot of money, but He's an older player, and like I said, we're still in the rebuilding process. So I don't really want to be giving tons of money away to, to veterans. Uh, Colby Rasmus, Jerry Sands. We have Landry, who can be our backup outfielder if necessary. So I'm going to hold off on offering any more deals. We can always revisit this stuff. Like Jose Bautista, if his price comes down, I might be willing to give him a one-year deal just to, you know, just to uh, have a body, you know. Uh, in the outfield for us so all right i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna pause here and then i'm gonna to keep the off-season episodes shorter uh i'm gonna the only other thing that i'm gonna do in this episode is i'm gonna show you guys who i'm gonna vote for for the hall of fame and then i will pick up with you guys later in the off-season i'll probably pick up at the at the uh rule five draft i'll give you guys an update on what's happened and then we'll just kind of cruise through there if there's any trades that i decide to make i'll also let you guys know about that so i will see you guys uh at the hall of fame voting and then we will take it from there all right guys so we are here and we are back for the hall of fame voting and i'm going to go ahead and show you guys who i'm going to vote for the ballot i took a quick look and obviously i'm not going to vote for barry bonds or roger clemens so they, like i said and the last time, those guys are PED users. I don't vote for those guys. It's just a it's a personal thing. Some people vote for them. Some people don't. I mean, I'm not going to vote for them in this. Berkman is a guy who I'm on the fence about. I'm going to let the computer vote for him first and see how many votes he gets. But we're going to vote for the guys that I voted for last year, Vladimir Guerrero. And uh, I'm going to vote for Roy Halladay. I think he's a Hall of Famer. He's new on the ballot this year. Todd Helton is a Hall of Famer for sure. Got to vote for him. I'm, I'm going to vote for Jeff Kent again. Still think he belongs in the Hall of Fame. Same with Edgar Martinez. Same with Fred McGriff. Both of those guys, unfortunately, probably will not get in either in real life or in this game, but I'm still going to vote for them. Mike Bucina, going to vote for him. Roy Oswalt's a guy I'm kind of on the fence about, but I, again, I want to see what the computer, how the computer handles him first. Mariano Rivera, obviously, that's a no-brainer. Kurt Schilling, vote for him. And then I had to make kind of a tough decision for the rest of the players here, but the only other guy, in my opinion, that is a – he'll probably get on his own, but I'm still voting for guys that I feel deserve it in terms of this ballot, and that's Jim Tome. He probably would have gotten in on his own anyways, and but there's other guys on here that have a ton of time left. And I want to vote for the guys that I feel deserve it. So 
This is my 10 player ballot. And most of the time you're not going to see guys, you're not going to see me putting 10 players on a ballot. But with this early on in the game, there's always a ton of really worthy players. Uh, I have a Houston Astros say that I'm in the year like 2041. I'm typically only voting for two to three guys on each ballot when you get that far into the game. But right now, 10 guys. I'm going to go ahead and submit that ballot. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut uh, the episode off here. So this will be the end of part one of the 2018 offseason. And the next episode will pick up uh, at the Rule 5 draft. That's where I'm going to start the next episode. We'll do the Rule 5 draft and any other... If there's any other moves I'm going to make in terms of whether it's free agent signings or if there's going to be trades that I might decide to make, I will let you guys know on that. But for now, I just want to say thanks again for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Comments and feedback are always welcome. And I will see you guys for part two of the 2018 offseason.